الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد The question is asking here What is the ruling on using the word Ya In the Arabic language Ya is known as a harf nida Ya Now linguistically Ya Meaning oh someone Or oh such and such Linguistically this is something which is obviously permissible Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Calls upon mankind Ya you are nas Ya you are amanu so ya here linguistically is not a dua and it doesn't entail shirk it is linguistically known as a harf nida the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said ya gulam in you kalimat i will teach you some words oh young man ya umar radiyallahu an al jabal al jabal ya sari al jabal al jabal this is a Karama that was given to Umar, uh, you know, a favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was given to him, but he was calling out to Saria, he's saying, Ya Saria. Therefore, the word Ya and the use of it linguistically is permissible, and this is what you will find in the books of Arabic grammar. Harf al Nida, Talab al Iqbal, Min Mukhatab, meaning you are drawing someone's attention to yourself. And this is fine, and this is permissible, and people do this all the time. Ya Ummi, Ya Abi, etc. My mother, my father, you know, you call out to them, there is no harm in that. However, Ya can also have a religious aspect to it. If there is an aqeedah that a person is calling out with Ya, thinking that these things can benefit them, these inanimate things, these people that have passed away, trees, stones, shrines, etc. And they call out to these things, then this ya, this harf al nida, becomes a dua and talab al shafa'a and a seeking of intercession. And the ulama refer to these things, and you will find this in the books of Aqila as istighatha and perhaps isti'ana, etc. And if this is the case, then this could end up with a person falling into shirk. May Allah protect us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Iya kan abudu. You alone we seek assistance in. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Supplicate to me alone and I will answer. So if a person is calling out, Ya such and such or Ya such and such, they are making dua to that person and dua can only be for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when talking about intercession, He says, مَا لَهُم مِن دُونِهِ مِن وَلِيٍ وَلَا شَفِيرٍ they don't have anyone that could intercede on their behalf and is only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say that all intercession belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the end of surah uh, surah Yunus do not call on to things or people who cannot benefit you and cannot harm you فَإِن فَعَلْتَ and if you did this, for إِنَّكَ إِذَا مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ If you did this, then you will be from the oppressors, meaning the people of shirk. And if Allah afflicts you with a test, nobody can remove it except Him. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants good for you, then nobody can turn that goodness away. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, الدُّعَاء هُوَ الْإِبَادَ In another hadith which has some weakness in it, الدُّعَاء مُخُّ الْإِبَادَ Dua is worship Dua is the essence of worship Therefore If a person uses the Haruf and nida Ya To call on to other than Allah Then there is no disagreement between the ulama And I'm talking about all the time the companions And the four madhabs That this is not permissible and it is shirk To the extent that Ibn Taymiyyah Rahimahullah said This uh, Haruf and nida for the deceased and going to the graves and worshipping people at the graves and making dua at the graves only came about with the Bataniya sect in the 4th century before that it wasn't known and you will find this in the books of fiqh so for example the ulama have differed what are the correct etiquettes of going to the messenger wasallam's grave in Medina so the Hanafis they say don't turn towards the grave and don't turn towards the Qibla walk with the grave towards the left of you and say salam to the messenger of Allah and go on your way the Malikiyah have said it is recommended for you to make dua after you have given salam to the Messenger of Allah but face the Qibla, not the grave. 
And there's further discussion from the other madhabs. The point that we're making here is that this was not known at the time of the Salaf. That a person would go to the grave and raise their voices and call on to the person in the grave. Like we've said, the Bataniya sect are the people who introduced the grave worship and then this became something which spread throughout the Ummah, may Allah protect us. To the extent that Umar and found two people that came from Taif and they were raising their voices in front of the grave of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he called them over and he said, what are you guys doing? Where are you from? And when they explained that we are from Da'if, etc., he said, had I known that you were not from, sorry, had you been from here and you would have no excuse, I would have punished you. And this is in line where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Hujarat, لا ترفعوا أسواسكم فوكسوا النبي Do not raise your voices in the presence of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam وَلَا تَجْهَرُ لَهُ بِالْقَوْلِ كَجَهْرِ بَعْدِكُمْ لِبَعْدِ أَن تَحْبَتَ عَمَالِكُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَشْعُرُونَ Just like how you address one another, how you talk to one another, how you raise your voices in the presence of one another, do not do this in the presence of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now a person might say, well, he's passed away. Imam Malik and others from the Salaf have said, this remains as a right upon the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, حَيَّمْ وَمَيِّتَةً this remains a right upon the messenger and we've seen this from the incident of Umar so go into the grave and we're using the grave of the messenger of Allah so Islam, because he's the best of mankind if it doesn't apply to him then it don't apply to anyone else if you go to his grave and you call out this is not the correct etiquette and if a person has an aqeedah and a belief that calling out to these people after they have passed away and they are now in the life of the barzakh and that they can help you, then these are going against the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying only this can be directed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In actual fact, some of the ulama have actually said using the harf and nida for Muhammad, and this you will find with certain sects, they say, Ya Muhammad, Ya Muhammad. This is actually the characteristic of the people of Nifaq. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the end of Surah An-Nur He says لا تجعل دعاء الرسول بينكم كدعاء بعدكم بعدا Do not address the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa how you address one another And the ulama of tafsir have said here Do not call him by his first name And you will find this from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself Some of the ulama of tafsir have said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't address Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa by his first name Not once in the Quran do you find Ya Muhammad You find Ya Adam You find Ya Nuh You find Ya Salih you don't find Ya Muhammad. What do you find? Ya Ayyuhan Rasul. Ya Ayyuhan Nabi. Therefore, saying Ya Muhammad, not only does it entail possible shirk, may Allah protect us from that, but it's a, a lack of respect for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to talk to him in that manner. La tajra dua rasul bainakum kadwa ba'dukum ba'da. And Allah then subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on to explain. قَدْ يَعْلَمُ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ يَتَسَلَّلُونَ مِنْكُمْ لِوَادَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows who of you is using his tongue in a manner to please the listener. Meaning, the people of Nifaq, they used to come to Muhammad and they used to say, Ya Muhammad, Ya Muhammad, Ya Muhammad. In order to show themselves as if they've got Iman, as if they are followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying here, no, no, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the tricks of your tongues. Not only is it disrespect, but this was the characteristic of the people of Nifaq that they used to call out to Muhammad sallallahu and say, yeah, Muhammad. Obviously his name is Muhammad sallallahu Of course we can call him Muhammad sallallahu But calling out to him with ya yeah in this manner, it could entail something which is haram and shirk and it could entail something which is disrespectful towards him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One last thing which is very important And we have to reiterate this Somebody might be listening to this and say Look, this Wahhabi is saying These people who are saying Ya Allah Or other than Ya Allah He is classing Muslims as mushriks This is pre- precisely not what we are saying Establishing the hujjah and the burhan and the proof Has conditions And nobody can go around saying Oh you did this, that means you're a munafiq You did this, that means you're a major sinner You did this, that means you're a deviant You did this, that means you're a mushrik Nobody is saying that But the ruling on the action needs to be understood Therefore you will find like we have said From the ayat in the Quran From the hadith of the messenger of Allah وسلم, From the time of the salaf That the word ya has been used But it has never been used For the purpose of istighatha 
and istiana and shafa and dua these are things that can only belong in your connection with Allah iyyaka na'budu wa iyyaka nasta'in we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he allows us to understand tawheed in the best possible manner and that he allows this Muslim ummah to return to its religion with the best of returning Allahu a'lam sallallahu ala nabiyyina